Hey everybody, welcome to episode 17 of the Ask That Show, where we answer your Volkswagen and Audi questions. Let's get into the show. A user on Vortex has a question about installing an aftermarket downpipe on an otherwise stock car. He says, I have a 2010cc 2.0T that is stock except for a GFB diverter valve and eBay output pipes. I was wondering if putting a downpipe on without a tune will have any noticeable effect in horsepower or is it only really worth it if you do the tune as well? One website selling downpipes claims 2030 horsepower, especially with the tune, which I wonder if it really meant. Make sure you get a tune or you might be disappointed. So installing a downpipe on a car that is essentially stock otherwise it just really it, it doesn't really have a purpose uh, you will get a more free-flowing exhaust when you install a downpipe by itself the problem is you're not maximizing that without software and really software is always going to be your best bang for your buck because you're going to get that you know 50 60 horsepower range from that tsi engine from just the flash and then a little bit more so once you get the downpipe so always if you're looking to mod your car i'm not sure why you would want to do a downpipe without doing a tune first especially because you're out of warranty maybe if you were in warranty but even then you would have check engine lights because of cat faults most like pretty much guaranteed unless you did some kind of o2 sensor spacer or something like that but installing a downpipe on a stock car really is kind of pointless so start with the tune then you can move on to a downpipe if you want to. Mike via shopdap.com asks, Hi, I was wondering what mods I can do to my 2016 GTI that won't void any warranties. None. The user on Vortex is Okay, we're just kidding. So, modifications you can do to a vehicle that will not void your warranty. This is a really complicated question. Unfortunately, there really isn't any that you can do that will 100% certainly not void your warranty that is not unless it's a vw approved accessory uh, we actually did a video about this with a jalopnik writer who is actually a lawyer his name is steve leto we'll link that up and basically the whole video talks about the magnus and moss warranty act and how it affects modified vehicles it's a pretty in-depth vehicle or uh, in-depth video that is about 30 minutes long so it may not be for everybody but if you're interested in this subject, it would be an important thing for you to watch because it goes pretty into pretty good detail about this subject. Now, just a brief overview of what that video talks about. Essentially, anything that is not an approved accessory for a VW is not going to be something that is 100% not going to void your warranty. Now, things like intakes or taillights or even some minor modifications are likely to not be anything that's a problem at all but it doesn't no one's going to be able to tell you definitively that, that no this doesn't void your warranty because they don't they don't warranty your vehicle that is a everything is situational based on what failed how it failed and what the likelihood that whatever modification you've done to the vehicle has caused that failure so for example you put aftermarket bulbs in your car, halogen bulbs, a lot of people like to get the blue ones. A lot of those have a higher wattage. Those higher wattage bulbs have a tendency to draw more current. And I have seen in my time bulbs to burn up wiring harnesses inside the headlights of, of different models. Now that would not be an approved warranty repair because the bulbs ca cause the additional amperage to be drawn through them which would then smoke the harness so other examples uh, people who put software performance software in their vehicles if you have have your engine blow up unfortunately depending on the dealer and the situation it's probably not going to be covered under warranty and you're going to be out the cost of that repair same goes for any other modification you know using an intake on a car there's not a lot of things an intake can do to actually cause a legitimate problem with a vehicle but that doesn't mean that if you bring it to a dealer who's not very friendly to basic modifications even as as simple as an intake that you couldn't have warranty problems associated with that and end up in a legal battle or a fight with them or whatever so all that said the basic 
answer is there isn't anything and you should always be aware that any modification you do to your vehicle has the potential for warranty issues for anything you do that is not an approved repair. The user on Vortex is having a false tire pressure monitoring system alarm. He wants to know, anybody have this issue? I haven't found any threads mentioning it yet. About two weeks ago, I caught a flat and had to get a new tire. The TPMS light came on. I pulled over after a couple miles. Destroyed my tire. It went flat fast from a hole about the size of a screwdriver head. I took it to the dealership to get a new tire. It only took them four hours to get me a new tire. Anyways, yesterday after driving about 20 miles, a TPMS light comes on. Pull over immediately and check tire pressure. Every tire is at 40. Should be closer to 35, but they're pretty warm at this point. I drive about five more miles, the light stays on, I pull over again and check all four with the car off. No change in pressure, no audible air leak, no visible hole. Kind of paranoid about it now, but I want to get back on the road. Finish the last 15 to 20 miles and check all four again, they're all the same. The TPMS light is still on this morning. I gave a quick visual inspection and none appeared low. Any idea what's up? This question was posed actually for a Mark 6 Jetta. Uh, there isn't any information in that slide about that. Basically, uh, you have cars with TPMS sensors and ones without. Vehicles with TPMS sensors have a sensor actually in the wheel. It monitors the tire pressure internally and then sends a wireless signal to the vehicle. The later version that roughly started in around 2012, depending on the vehicle, is going to be monitored through the ABS system, which basically uses a wheel speed sensor to determine uh, how fast each wheel is turning to determine if one of them is flat. So when you have a flat or basically even if you reset your tire pressure, change your wheels, basically do anything related to your wheels and or tires, there's a reset button to basically recalibrate the vehicle. And that should be done when you set your tire pressures. Once you have known good tire pressures all the way around the vehicle, you hit the reset button, it will then relearn that this is the correct setting. So what sounds like probably happened in this situation is tire got replaced, new tire installed, no one hit the reset button once the tire pressures were set, which created this problem, hence uh, continuing having this issue where it thinks the tire pressure is off even though it's not. If you take a look here, we have a, this is from our Mark 7, they actually have in the uh, radio display, the reset setup is in there. Other vehicles like the Mark 6 Jetta, a lot of times will have a tire pressure reset button in the glove box. Um, either way, no matter what you do, changing your tire pressure, always hit the reset button uh, to relearn and recalibrate to the vehicle. A lot of times, the other, another question people have is, does my car have TPMS and how can I tell? whether you have sensors in the wheels or not. And if you take a look here, this picture shows a standard rubber valve stem versus a tire pressure sensor. And if you look at your wheel where the, where the um, valve stem comes through, that's where you put the air in your tires, the uh, valve stem actually has a nut on it if you have a tire pressure ses sensor in there. That way, that's what you use to tighten it down so that the sensor is held in place. A standard rubber valve stem wouldn't be like that. So if you just see a little rubber piece sticking out, then you're not gonna have a tire pressure sensor in there, at least for Volkswagen and Audi. Yeah, some other models use different tire pressure systems. A user on Vortex is concerned about his GTI not being worth much. He says, we have three vehicles for two people, and I was thinking about getting rid of the GTI and buying something that I can put my dogs in and use as a daily driver. It's expensive to maintain and insure three cars. I was told I can get about 15K on a trade. I called CarMax, and the guy told me that the phone is ringing off the hook with VW people calling to sell their cars. Needless to say, I didn't bother. This really sucks that non-diesel cars are being affected. When do you think it will rebound? Okay, so... Uh, vehicle value, we actually made a quick uh, video in another Ask That question that talked about vehicle value, but I felt like we can touch on this a little bit more just because the diesel gate situation is very unlikely to be anything related to a, the reason why your vehicle value is severely diminished as you feel. First, a lot of people are trying to trade their vehicle. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I've talked to a bunch of people who uh, who I know in the automotive business who have a lot of experience, they buy a lot of wholesale vehicles because they're on the sales side of things. And they've told me that 
it doesn't seem like the general VW auction values are diminished in any way. They said they've seen less volume, um, but I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of that would be. If you would have less volume, you would think uh, the value would either stay the same or potentially go up, but uh, there's some issues around that as well. The, the really important part to know about this situation is trading your car in after one year of ownership is pretty much never a good idea. It's always going to be a problem. Now, we actually pulled this information uh, that Edmunds has this really good write-up that we'll link to. But basically, if you take a look, this depicts uh, the, the depreciation of a new vehicle after purchase. Now, the vehicle that they use an example on was a 370Z. And you see you have at zero miles purchase brand new, the car has X value. I wanna say it's around 29,000 after one mile and uh, driving off the lot in one minute of ownership, it's depreciated by, I think it's around $2,600. And then after one year of ownership with roughly 15,000 miles, which is gonna vary. So if you have 12,000 miles, just keep in mind, this number is still gonna be close just because you have you know, two or 3,000 miles less. It's not necessarily gonna be a significant jump in value. Um, but if you look at that third number, it's now depreciated like $5,600. And so you see after one year of ownership of a vehicle, your, your vehicle is appreciated by $5,600, but I guarantee you that you haven't necessarily had that much value offset and, and paid down on the balance of your vehicle, assuming you're uh, financing it. And so you're gonna be underwater, guaranteed, just basic math. And that also depends on how good of a deal you negotiated on the front end of purchasing the vehicle in the first place, along with interest rates and blah, 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 and all the other stuff. The bottom line is don't trade a car after a year. It's never gonna be a good news for you. You're always gonna be upset. Maybe if you have some sort of ultra rare car, like a, a Hellcat or something that, you know, that is in crazy high demand and really low production, that would probably be a car that you could probably trade after a year, but other than that, there is really no vehicle you can drive off the lot and trade in a year and probably be happy with the price you're going to get for the vehicle. Thank you for watching episode 17 of the Ask Dap Show. If you want your questions answered, shoot us an email, info at shopdap.com.